we want to graph and describe the transformation for the given sine function. Notice how the sine function is in this form here. Let's begin by identifying the values of c, a, b, and d. c is equal to negative five. a is equal to positive four. b is equal to positive two. We need to be careful about the sine of d. Notice how we have x minus d here, and we have x minus one-fourth pi, and therefore d is positive one-fourth pi. When we have subtraction, d is positive. When we have addition, d is negative. C indicates a vertical translation or vertical shift, and since c is negative five, the function is translated or shifted down five units. Because the function is shifted down five units, so is the midline, and therefore the midline is not the x-axis, the midline is y equals negative five. And let's go ahead and sketch the midline. The absolute value of a is equal to the amplitude, and the absolute value of a is equal to the absolute value of four, which is four, the amplitude is four, and because A is positive, we do not have a reflection across the midline. Remember, when A is negative, we do have a reflection across the midline. Next, two pi divided by B is equal to the period, and we have B equals two, so two pi divided by B is equal to two pi divided by two, which is pi, so the period is pi radians. D indicates a phase shift, which is also called a horizontal translation or horizontal shift, because D is positive one-fourth pi, the function is translated or shifted right one-fourth pi radians. So because the graph is shifted one-fourth pi radians to the right, let's sketch a vertical line at x equals one-fourth pi radians, or x equals pi over four, which is here. And because the period is pi radians, and one-fourth pi plus pi, or one-fourth pi plus four-fourths pi is equal to five-fourths pi, let's also sketch a vertical line at x equals five-fourths pi, or five pi over four, which is here. So we'll have the graph of one period of the given sine function over this interval. And now let's divide this interval into four equal subintervals which would have a width of one-fourth a period, or one-fourth pi radians, which would be here, here, and here. And also, because the midline is y equals negative five, and the amplitude is positive four, negative five plus four is equal to negative one. The maximum function value is negative one and negative five minus four is negative nine. Negative nine is the minimum function value. Remember when graphing the basic sine function over one period, the pattern is midline, maximum, midline, minimum, and midline. So now we'll follow this pattern over one period of our sine function. So starting next equals one-fourth pi radians, we would be at the midline, which is here, and now following the pattern for the basic sine function, we have a maximum back down to the midline, a minimum, and back up to the midline. So here's the graph of one period of the given sine function. Before we graph more of the function, let's complete the statements above. The phase shift or horizontal shift is right one fourth pi radians. Here we just enter the value of d, which is positive one-fourth pi radians, or pi over four radians. Because it's positive, we know the shift is right. Next, the translation of the ordered pair zero comma zero is what point on our function. Remember, zero comma zero is the first point we plot when graphing the basic sine function, but because we had a phase shift, the first point we plotted was this point here, where the ordered pair is one-fourth pi comma negative five. Which again, we can also write as pi over four comma negative five. 
So this point corresponds to the point zero comma zero on the basic sine function. And notice how this is on the midline. So we say which is on the midline. Next, the period is pi radians. One fourth of the period is one fourth of pi or one fourth pi, which again we can also write as pi over four. The point that is one fourth of the period to the right of the phase shift is this high point here, which is pi over two or one half pi comma negative one. which notice how this is a high point, and therefore we classify this as a maximum. Before we go though, let's sketch more of the graph. To help us do this, we'll sketch a vertical line every one-fourth of the period, or every one-fourth pi radians, which on the right would be here. On the left would be the y-axis, and here. And now we just follow the same pattern for the sine function. So on the right, we'd be back up at a maximum here. The graph looks like this. To the left, we'd be down at a minimum here, and then back to the midline here. So the graph looks something like this. I hope you found this helpful.